Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Max Moms, where we're going to be talking about healthy moms and healthy families. We realize there could be lots of questions, and Dr. Justine has made herself available. You can text her at 647-987-9355. So I wanted to welcome Dr. Justine um, this evening, and she is an amazing woman, um, just she is um, a chiropractor, but she's also a wife and a mother, and she really is a warrior um, for health and wellness. Um, she's active in our community. Um, she volunteers. She's very active in sports, and she really has an incredible vision and believes that everyone deserves a healthcare team um, that focuses on prevention and optimal health and open communication. Please help me welcome Dr. Justine Blaney Broker. Hello, everybody. So we've got great stuff today because everybody wants a healthy family. I've got two kids. Uh, Johanna is my daughter. She's turning 21 soon. And my son, uh, Teo, who's 18, turning 19 soon. So um, definitely there's all different stages. But today we're going to talk about creating those healthy families, those healthy moms. Um, and of course, we'll include some of the dads too. Um, but upcoming, we're going to talk about gut health and how gut health, uh, that brain gut reaction, but how that can lead to inflammation, how it can lead to pain, how it can lead to fatigue. Um, it can help affect all of your different joints. So coming up, definitely stay on track with myself and Dr. Udani. We're going to learn more about naturopathy. What is it? How does it help? Um, well, how is that different than a medical doctor? And why would you have both? Um, we're going to learn about brain health and more about vertigo. So share these upcoming talks with friends and family. Um, we often uh, may miss it one time, but they could catch it later on YouTube, on Facebook, and on our website. So we just want to include everybody wherever they live in the world. So our mission is to help people be their best, right? Their absolute best with information about holistic healing, about vitalism, about chiropractic, about our true potential, about our innate intelligence and the healing inside of us so we can be our best. So today we're going to talk about all these cutie pies, these beautiful babies, these miracles that we all get to enjoy in our families and how to help that process, help them be their best and help you along the way with that process of being pregnant. So chiropractic, I am um, through both my babies. I was adjusted all along the way. Um, so there are specific techniques for pregnancy um, and they change along the way through the different trimesters. Um, and, and there's also different ways that we feel along the different trust trimesters where chiropractic is absolutely necessary. Some of the greatest research shows that when our spine is proper aligned, the nerves that go to the uterus go to the baby is that much better. But just common sense shows that if mom is under less stress, the baby's under less stress. So just to give you an example, um, some of the things I know that that if I eat a sugary product um, or if I was under stress, I could feel the baby kicking more. Um, so we know that the hormones, the energy that's affecting mom affects the baby. So while we're getting adjusted, while we're helping proper alignment, that helps reduce stress. But also just preparing your pelvis so that you can have the best, um, quickest, um, you know, less pain uh, delivery possible. So chiropractors work with pregnancy right from day one, right to the end. And then of course, afterwards, and how to help uh, put Humpty Dumpty back together when we're not feeling so great, uh, both mentally and physically physically to get our energy up to be able to take care of our new little one. So as we go into the different trimesters, um, typically people talk about the 40 weeks uh, with the three trimesters, but to, it can go anywhere between 37 to 42 weeks. So that 40 week zone is an average, um, but in, and it does create panic sometimes if people are earlier or two weeks later, but we do know that it is an average and it can vary. So let's go into that first trimester typically from the first to the 12th week. 
for me, this is when I was so tired. At the beginning, I didn't even know with both kids. I didn't know I was pregnant, um, but I just knew that I was playing hockey in between periods when the Zamboni was on. I needed to have a nap in my hockey equipment. I just sit back with my helmet on. I was that tired. Um, for many, uh, uh, also, you, we can start to get that morning sickness. For me, I had a sore or sore chest that can affect in that first month. Um, so this is when our body is so rapidly changing, but you don't necessarily have all the other signs. Some people could still have some breakthrough bleeding. Um, you could still, uh, you know, be functioning completely normal, have no ideas. And certainly, you know, your belly doesn't grow that fast in the, in the first four weeks. So some of the signs along with fatigue, morning sickness, cravings. I mean, I know for weirdest cravings um, for my uh, daughter, it was a lot of chocolate milk. And for my son, it was mac and cheese. And I don't eat that stuff or drink that stuff, but somehow I had those cravings. And we start to have that mild weight gain. So you'll find that actually, you know, it's so different. Some people talk about pickles. Some people talk about peanut butter. Some people talk about pizza. Or some people talk about what they can't eat. They can't have dairy. Um, so there's a variety of changes, but there's a lot of great supplements also, and our naturopaths can help you along that first trimester to help with your energy, to know the the good prenatal vitamins versus the bad, um, how to help with morning sickness, things like raspberry tea and ginger. Um, so there are certainly some different options in order to manage that first trimester. Certainly chiropractic is an area to help increase our energy, help us find uh, feel that much better. And we often have different pillows for the chest area for that tenderness. As we get into the second trimester, week 13 through 27, um, often morning sickness goes away, thank goodness. Um, uh, we, just, we still need to make sure we're getting enough fluids in this time, uh, but we might find to start to feel that we uh, our feet get swollen and then that can persist throughout. Our hands feel swollen. People start to begin symptoms of carpal tunnel, headaches as their body is changing. Um, they start to start to start to see new signs of the belly growing, but then that changes the arc of our lower back, helps her bring our head forward as we're trying to uh, adjust to that new weight and water retention. Um, so we start to see some beginning waking. Uh, second baby, wow, it seems to happen a lot faster. Body changes so much faster. Um, more appetite, uh, but the energy starts to get better. Um, and then, you know, near the end of that second trimester, you start to feel the kicks, which is always so exciting. And so exciting that you could you know, change the amount of kicking with different foods like a juice or music or touch even on the belly or belly massage. Our registered massage therapist will do specific massages for pregnant women that can be on the back, but also on the belly. And it's amazing to feel the baby follow the hands with those, with those massages. As we get into third trimester, week 28 through 40 or 42, if it's delayed, um, lots of going to the bathroom, especially in the middle of the night, so frustrating that you still need to drink that water. Um, it's just preparing you to get up a lot and to, and to be tired uh, near the end. But we have to go to the bathroom a lot more often, a lot more frequent, a lot more urgency. Um, can get heartburn. That happened with me. That was part of the, I think, the chocolate milk, just trying to reduce the heartburn. But remember that heartburn can also be a sign of a breech baby. So the, the head is up high, putting pressure on the sphincter, which affects the acid reflux. So getting adjusted in the mid back can help with that heartburn. It certainly helped me. Changing your diet makes a big difference. And then making sure you do get checked to make, uh, that you're not, not dealing with a breech, a breech baby. Um, lots of swelling can happen in the feet and the hands. So this is when women can get tingling or numbness, but we also have to check for um, uh, diabetes. Uh, if, if that's starting to pregnancy, diabetes, you want to check for that. And again, this is when the chest can start to get sore again. The chest starts to get bigger um, and uh, fatigue starts to, to kick in um, in that third trimester. 
So as we look at those due dates, realize that they can change. About 5% are actually accurate. So we don't want to, we want to be ready. That, you know, that was one of the things my daughter was a month early, certainly was not ready, thought I had a little more time. Um, and I had just opened the Justine Blaine Wellness Center and literally within a week and a half, they were saying I had to have the, have the baby. Um, uh, as emergency C-section, I tried to find all sorts of different uh, route routes and wasn't able. So within two weeks of opening the center in 2000, uh, I was having my daughter, Hannah. So those 40 weeks, that is a, uh, a range, um, but we want to make sure we don't stress about that range. So some of the nutrition when you're pregnant, so, so, so important because um, we need the right supplements. So number one, the water, super important, iron, folate. We want to make sure we're avoiding things like spina bifida, our vitamin C, our vitamin D, our zinc. These are things that we want to be taking all the time, um, our calcium and our fiber. We know that we can be making sure we get our calories can be slowly increasing. Um, so getting a really good uh, materna are uh, good supplements and making sure that sometimes they're customized to you. And that's why talking to the naturopath to make sure that you're getting what you need based on your diet, like what you regularly eat or how your diet has changed due to these different cravings. Um, some of the fo foods that you might want to avoid, though, are things that can have different uh, potential salmonella or E. coli. Things like some of the raw cookie or raw cake batter, sometimes we have those cravings. I'm um, looking at some of the different cheeses or unpasteurized or uncooked foods. We're just super, super careful uh, with anything that you goes in your body, whether that's a food, that's a drug, or even a supplement. You want to make sure that you have talked to a naturopath, a nutritionist, a chiropractor to make sure you have the right ones for you. With Maximize Living, they have different daily supplements that you can get on our website. Um, but one of the things that you will notice in these is good essential oils. Um, they affect your brain. They affect your nervous system, your B vitamins. So getting a good package or a good quality package is super important for you to be your best while you're pregnant in order to essentially feed that fetus, feed that baby the best uh, fuel possible. Now, there's been some fears about exercising when pregnant. You can absolutely exercise along the way. Typically, what you were doing before, you can do with a, just a slight decrease in modifications. You can still weight lift. You can still jump. You can still run if you were doing that before. Well, this is not the time to wrap, ramp up your, your fitness. Um, you want to be consistent with what you were doing before. So if you were doing stretching before and walks, then this is not the time to start for a run. But if you're a marathon runner, you can easily continue running, but at lower, you know, lower pace and, and lower um, uh, number of kilometers. Some of the things we do often want to avoid is having our head below our heart. Um, just like they say, you know, about sleeping, you know, to make sure you're not always sleeping on that um uh, one side. So you I, typically switching sides is good. Obviously not sleeping on your stomach. Same thing with exercise. You're not going to do a lot of exercises where you're putting a lot of pressure on your stomach, but exercises can be modified and customized during pregnancy and definitely recommend it. The fitter you are going in, the better it is for, for labor time and pregnancy. The fitter you are and the more you maintain your fitness during pregnancy, the easier that pregnancy will be. So it is safe, but it does have to be modified for you. You still can exercise to get your heart rate up um, as long as you it's up, but you can still have a conversation. Um, but again, you want to have that customized, have that conversation with your chiropractor, your doctor, your naturopath, um, because you, it's not this is not the time for a radical change and increase in exercise load. So some of the birthing options um, when, for both my children, I wanted to have a home birth, but many people like the hospital birth. Um, we had the home birth option and uh, the water birth. I tried the, I, I ended up trying all three. So um, a little bit of experience about going through them and some of the decision making. Having a midwife is absolutely amazing. Uh, certainly saved my son's life 
um, even in the hospital. Um, so you want to uh, look into midwives. Very, very difficult. They have lots and lots of attention. More visits, more one-on-one -on -one visits, more well visits after the baby is born at the house. Um, often you end up with one main min uh, midwife, a second one backup, and a third backup. So it, it's definitely a great great option covered by OHIP here in Ontario. Um, and then having a doula is a huge help. Now today with the pandemic, doulas are often not allowed in the actual hospital setting, but they are in a home birth, um, allowed to work with the midwives. Uh, so looking, even if having a doula, even if you're just learning the process up to the hospital and then having that help afterwards, doulas help with um, getting used to the new routines and the breastfeeding. So doulas can be super, super helpful to have that kind of coach, that support along the way. So if we go into the hospital births, that is kind of the traditional way, what most people are comfortable with. But it does mean that you're going to have more hospital-like procedures, um, or, uh, you know, a more sterile environment. Um, you don't know who will be delivering your baby or which nurse will be on. You don't have that relationship with them versus, um, so it's not necessarily that your OBGYN uh, is going to be there to deliver your baby. Um, so it is still, you know, a choice by many, um, but knowing that, you um, there um often these medical interventions are more encouraged so you may be more likely to be induced more likely to have intervention different kinds of painkillers um more likely to be encouraged to a c-section if you are in the hospital so um, making sure even going into hospital have your birthing plan written out have it communicated with your OBYN, um, have it written to bring with you, have your support person, whether that's your spouse or significant other or close family member, friend, make sure they know your plan because once you're starting to get into the pain rhythm, you're not thinking about it. You want somebody else who's really had that communicated to them of what your goals are. Um, for example, you know, information about the silver in the eyes, the vitamin K injections, the um, how you want to cut the cord, how you want to begin breastfeeding, um, information about uh, painkillers or being induced or epidurals or having whether you want to have um, be cut or if you want to be able to have the tear. We know when we have episiotomies, more common in the hospital, but harder to sew back together versus having tear. So these are all conversations that you want to have ahead of time, decisions you want to make before being in pain. So we do have a birthing package uh, for new moms and new families uh, that you're welcome to get at our office that just basically has a list of questions that you, with different options that you go through with your uh, significant other or with the other parent or and to make sure that you are getting the plan you want and you're having that also plan A, plan B, and plan C. Um, so for me, for example, I was starting with, you know, home birth, water birth, and then uh, due to emergency challenges, uh, the midwives sent me to the hospital, but I still had plan A, B, C, and my plan written out. As we get to home birth, this is often done with a midwife, um, super safe, uh, amazing. You get a lot more contact, a lot more support, same person the whole time with you, whether it's six hours, 12 hours, 20 hours. Um, you can combine it with a water birth. Uh, the advantage with a home birth is you're truly getting what you want. You can have more people, more family around. It is restricted uh, a little bit uh, right now, um, but they they still have a, a lot more availability for family connection, family support. You're in a comfortable environment. You're where you feel your best and you get to control that environment um, as well as possible. Uh, for me, the midwives were there when they saw that things weren't progressing. Um, they did send me to the hospital. So knowing midwives are trained, they know when things are safe and when, nope, these are the steps to get to the hospital. And you have usually quite a bit of time to make that decision. Uh, and they know well in advance. 
Water bursts are pretty cool. Many, many women love this because it reduces the pain. Once you get into the water, those contractions are way less painful. Um, it's easier on the baby uh, to come out in the water. Uh, it is, they're not gonna drown. Um, they, you know, they, they know what they're doing and, and the midwives typically know what they're doing. So it's, it's becoming more and more popular. Uh, it's easier on the mom, it's easier on the baby, uh, as long as you're comfortable with a home birth. Uh, once I got to the hospital uh, with my son, um, I did ask for a bathtub and I was able to do a lot of the laboring in the bathtub. And again, that did reduce the, the pain discomfort, but you have to make sure that you request it. Um, and then the, the anesthesiologist, a lot of the doctors were not comfortable with it. They, they were unsure of it. So sometimes having that discussion uh, with your OBYN, but also when you do your tour of the hospital, if you're using the hospital and making sure that your support person is able to stand up for you and what the goals that you have, because you may not be able to do so for yourself. All right. After you're having the baby, it's still tough. You're tired. You might be sore. You're not yourself. Um, you're mentally, you may not be yourself. You may be sleep deprived. This is when it's time to ask for help. So much more difficult today when you're not supposed to have different people in the family. So this might be the time to have, you know, another person to isolate to make sure that, that you feel confident and safe with them. This is when your partner may need to take time off. Um, this is super, super challenging, both on the physical and the mental aspect. I know I used to think that, well, breastfeeding was so normal, it would come easily, uh, but it's not. It's hard at the very point, first baby, um, getting the baby to learn to suck properly. Uh, I know when my daughter was born, she never woke up. She was preemie. So for the first month, we used to put ice cubes on her back, ice cubes on her feet to try and wake her up to, to feed. Um, so learning how to tube feed, cup feed, get to breastfeeding, dealing with the contractions after having a C-section or contractions of the uterus after breastfeeding, dealing with stitches that can be painful. Um, and just the fatigue of when, you know, when do you get to have a shower or the worries of how to breastfeed? Will you choke the baby? Will, you know, will they suffocate? Um, cause your chest is so much bigger. Are you getting enough milk? These are all typical worries for, for new moms, especially. And I, that's why I've been a breastfeeding companion with the region of Peel hospital, the Peel hospital been doing that and helped over for over almost 20 years, helping over 300 moms learning and asking questions about breastfeeding and storage of milk and how to reduce that overall stress. Because if the mom is stressed, that's still going to affect the breast milk. And if the mom is not eating healthy, that is going to help the breast milk. Um, and there can be different areas where the mom is eating a food that is affecting the digestion of the baby. I remember one mom that was helping in the summer was eating lots of strawberries, you know, thinking, you know, fresh strawberries, but the baby was colic. And uh, we certainly get the babies uh, checked for spinal dysfunction because that helps with colic, but also it meant getting off the strawberries because that was affecting the breast milk and affecting the baby. So postpartum recovery, uh, you know, we often have unrealistic uh, expectations of moms and of ourselves that we should be easier. Everybody else has done it. I should be able to handle it. And this is the time to really be able to ask for advice. Now, one of the advice things comes with sleep because we're so, so, so tired. Um, we've just had the biggest, you know, workout of our lives, the biggest change in our lives. So much hormonally, physically is changing in our bodies and we're just tired. And a lot of times people say, well, just sleep when the baby sleeps. But then when the baby's sleeping, your mind is racing about all the things you need to do, the laundry, the cleaning that you can't sleep well, or you're sleeping in such short periods of time. I know my daughter especially was eating every two hours as a preemie and she was only eating like 15 cc's like less than an ounce every time that she ate at the beginning being a preemie so um it's challenging and it's it's learning to nap or just close your eyes rest your eyes and sometimes just letting things go laundry's got to go dishes got to stay in the sink the mess is going to stay there and finding a way um, to, to rationalize that in your mind that the, the, the most important thing you need to do is try try to rest and make it a priority. Um, and then uh, starting to um, pump early and, and teaching babies how to bre uh, 
combined breast milk with pumped milk can give mom an extra break. So uh, I was I breastfed for four years, four and a half years um, within two babies. So learning how to have the best pump, I used a Medulla um, electric pump so that you it would be uh, faster. Um, and this uh, and teaching the babies because they suck differently with with uh, breast milk um, when it's on the breast, um, they're typically pushing out and when they're on the bottle they it's a different way of sucking the tongue motion is different so babies need to learn this just like exercise they need to learn the different ways of of, of being able to get the the breast milk um and so once you breastfeed though and once you learn to pump um that can give somebody else a chance to feed which creates body connection and allows mom to get an extra rest so certainly recommend learning how to uh, pump and breastfeeding as long as possible. Some of the postpartum part of my exercise, you got to start easy, especially if you've had stitches, um, different uh, medical interventions. Start to learn pelvic floor exercises and Kegel exercises. This can be discussed with your naturopath, your midwife, your chiropractor, um, but trying to get your balance back because your line of gravity has changed. Your belly has changed. Um, the way you stand is different. So learning new balance core exercises, this is the time to add the stretching and sort of especially in that first two weeks to give your body that slow movements to come back through yoga pilates stretching exercises breathing exercises this isn't the time to you know go for a fast run or a hit exercise jumping uh burpees but you will be able to get back into those motions so breastfeeding is a passion for me. Breast is best. It is the best food with all the best things, um, best immunoglobins, immune system, food for the baby. So I highly recommend all moms try this and try for as long as you can. It is hard. Like I said, for my daughter, lots and lots of tears and her being going from cup feeding to tube feeding. It took three months before she was actually breastfeeding. But then, you know, we were able to go on for two years and she became you know, she was adjusted from an hour of being born, um, breastfed, and literally never got sick, you know, never missed sports, never missed, missed school uh, for being sick. So, so, so important for the baby, um, but also important for mom. They show that a lot of research shows that you will lose weight faster, you'll get your body shape better, it'll help the uterus contract to come back to its regular shape to heal better, help reduce your risks of breast cancer, um, help reduce stress, mental stress and postpartum stress and postpartum depression. So breastfeeding is, is challenging. This is when you want a support person, um, in order to be able to deal with the, the challenges that go along the way. There are some natural supplements that can help with breastfeeding. I definitely recommend, uh, talking to your naturopath, your midwife, um, about things like fenugreek, um, and, uh, you know, fennel, garlic, there are numerous different, uh, breastfeeding supplements. I know that, uh, one of our friends, uh, same sex couple, they were able to get the other, uh, mom to be able to breastfeed by using different supplements. You want to drink enough water. This doesn't mean drink milk in order to produce milk, uh, but getting enough fluids into your body. And certainly if you're challenged with breastfeeding, seeks help from a lactation uh, expert, um, a, a support volunteer person like myself, or your naturopath, your doula, your midwife, um, to find out making sure about the latch, making sure that the baby doesn't have, isn't tongue-tied. You want to be able to make sure that you're producing more milk yourself and, and learning about when to pump, um, typically that first after that first feed in the morning is one of the best times and late in the evening is the worst time. Um, so learning ways to produce more milk for yourself and making sure that the baby is able to uh, receive that milk as well as possible. So then the babies get bigger and they grow and it's so easy to just focus, focus, focus on the baby and ignore ourselves. And when I say ignore ourselves, I mean we ignore ourselves for mental health, physical health, for rest. So this is the time when we still need to maintain our overall health 
in all areas, and especially your chiropractic care. Your body is changing with your chiropractic care. Your posture is changing from that, you know, pushing the belly out, head forward, to all of a sudden the belly's coming forward. So it changes your lower back, changes your upper back, changes your neck. And then the baby gets heavier, so you're carrying the baby a lot or you're leaning over with breastfeeding. So this is the time when we have these postural misalignments that affects that brain-body connection. The other part is there's something called biopsychology. So when our posture is out of line, there's scientific research that affects the neurotransmitters. That affects how our brain sends messages to the rest of our body and even affects our psyche, our moods, our thoughts, our feelings. There's lots and lots of different parts of the brain that are affected by our nervous system. That frontal lobe, the, the front part, can affect our reasoning, our motor skills, affect how we want to do fight or flight and avoid risk or take on challenges, affects language and cognition. So this is super important, how the movement of our neck and our brain stem and the stress on our nervous system and how it affects that frontal area for areas of depression, postpartum moods and swings. As we get to the parietal lobes, this is area where we affects our touch and affects um, our pain and how we deal with pressure. Uh, it is we get into the temporal lobes on the side. This is area affects our language and our hearing, um, and this area affects our memories. And then finally, when we get to the back part of our brain, that's the area that can affect uh, um, nightmares, visual acuity and how we interpret information. So we want our brain to be able to function well, to send messages you know, towards affecting our psyche and towards the rest of our body. And one of the things that chiropractic does is get rid of those areas of subluxation, those areas of interference on the nervous system. So you'll see with this chart that the nerves control everything in your body, from how you breathe, to how your heart pumps, how you see, your sinuses, how you hear, how your arms and your legs work, how you digest, how you breathe, how you go to the bathroom, strength and power. So different areas of the nervous system can affect things like depression, headaches, focus, sleep, energy levels, moods. And so typically that is that atlas axis, the top part of your brain, the two most important areas where we want to have that C curve. And often that is lost and aggravated during pregnancy because our spine is changing so much with that line of gravity and the weight gain. So this is the time to have that spinal area checked because you want to be the best for your child. And that means taking care of yourself as well. So some of the nutraceuticals uh, for moms um, certainly want to uh, have a great multivitamin. Maximize Living Onsite has different multivitamins in our office. We have um, different uh, multivitamins. The one in the office is the one that uh, I use. But you want to make sure you have good quality and less filler in that multivitamin, especially if you're breastfeeding because Everything that's in you can potentially still be transferred through that breast milk. There's different women's hormones um, and urinary uh, health, uh, especially if you've had a vaginal birth. So these are on our Max Living site, but definitely please consult with your naturopath, your holistic nutritionist. Make sure that you're only taking what is right for you. On our website with Maximize Living, we have all sorts of different uh, literature that you can look up about um, prenatal vitamins, about prenatal health, uh, about postnatal health. So please feel free to check out our websites with Maximize Living so you can get some of this great information. There's information on all of the different supplements there and um, lots of information about different forms of exercise, toxins. But if you want that birthing plan, please, uh, you know, contact us at the office. We'd be happy to provide it for you. Um, and then talk to your naturopath. Uh, Dr. Udani, Dr. Linda at our office are great. But find a way to make sure you have that support system so that you're looking at all areas of your health, your mental health, your physical health, your nutritional health, um, and your spiritual health. So make sure we have it all together. 
with Maximize Living. They do have a book coming out soon um, in order to help those new moms get the best uh, results. I know I used a lot of the books. I think I have my shelf still here um, about what to expect in that pregnant during pregnancy, what to expect in that first two years. And super helpful just to kind of be aware of some of the changes happening in your body uh, before and after pregnancy. So taking that first step, one of the steps is just making sure you get a checkup and you get your healthcare team ready for you to be your best. I recommend that before you even pregnant, making sure you have your chiropractor, your massage therapist, your naturopath, your medical doctor, your pediatric um, pediatrician, um, having the whole team ready for you so that you can be coached along this difficult process. Some of the action steps, you're always welcome uh, to contact us. We do offer complimentary consultations. That's a five-minute meet and greet. Um, it can be done virtually or in the office just to make sure it's the right fit, to make sure that uh, this is the kind of care that you want and support system you want, and know that your coaches will work together. So um, definitely contact us at the Justine Blaine Wellness Center. Our, um, the office phone number Angela will give you is just a way to make sure that we can help you best um, and and to be really really starting to read up more um, about what we put in our bodies what we put in our thoughts um, and how we take care of our frame so that we can be as strong and as powerful um, and the best moms and dads possible next one so I, I'm so happy you were with us today. I wish you the best during your journey. Share your journey. Connect with mo other moms so you never feel alone because it is, it's, it's not the easiest thing, especially with the first one, first baby. And then stay with us for our upcoming talks on, on your gut health, on how naturopathy can help you and what are the differences between a naturopath and homeopath and why would you have a naturopath along with your medical doctor and your pediatrician and your doula or your midwife um, and learning more about vertigo because that can just be absolutely horrible and many times even people get vertigo uh, after uh, delivery so learning more about it because it can be really really debilitating if the world is spinning on you so stay tuned share with friends and connect with us we'd love um, to have your reviews we want to always be providing you lots of free great information for you and your families and we look forward to seeing you soon